Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of ScienceInHydroponics.com and today we are going to be talking yet again about pH buffers and another way to prepare them. On my last video about buffer preparation, I talked about a way in which you could precisely prepare a buffer if you have pure enough substances and you have a scale that allows you to weigh very precise quantities of these substances and then use them to prepare the buffer. These quantities assume that the substances are very pure and sometimes even USP grade substances are not as pure as we would like. So if you are not very careful with the amounts you weigh or with the purity of the substances, you can end up with buffers that are not prepared right, which can lead to issues with the readings if you use them to calibrate your instruments. So, thinking about the fact that this method is not as easy to use for most people, I have decided to make this video where I will show you how to prepare buffers in a much simpler way. As a matter of fact, we will not even use a scale. The only assumption I am going to make, which is a, a pretty big catch, is that you already have a calibrated pH meter which most people will already have because oh, no one prepares their own buffers. So if you have a pH meter, you likely have bought solutions that you use to calibrate your meter with. So I'm assuming that you already have a calibrated meter. In this case, I'm gonna be using an APERA or APERA, I'm not sure how you pronounced it. Um, pH 60 meter, which is my all time favorite for hydroponics and for routine measurements. So, to prepare this buffer, we are going to be using pretty much the same stuff we used last time. We're going to be using citric acid and we're going to be using potassium citrate. These two are the ones that make up the buffer. We are also going to use this, which is sodium benzoate, which is a preservative. We're going to prepare a pH 4 buffer in this example and we're going to use this as a preservative so that the buffer does not spoil because if you don't use it, then the buffer will spoil with time. So this is going to preserve it. We are also going to use a food dye, which is gonna be red because pH 4 buffers are usually red. I have not used it, so I don't know how it will behave in acidic, under acidic conditions. Bear in mind that food dyes uh, are often, their color is often pH dependent. So don't freak out if you add it and then you prepare the buffer and the color changes. That, that's fine, most likely. So <laughs> don't worry too much about it. Now, uh, for calibration of your pH meter, if you haven't already done so, I would suggest you use a NIST approved calibrations, cal calibration solution. I bought these on Amazon and they are super, super precise. As you can see, uh, you have pH, uh, these solutions have the pH to like uh, three decimal places. So these are ideal so that you have a really, really well calibrated meter and then you can use this to prepare the buffers that we are going to use for storage so that we don't need to keep buying this stuff for like routine calibration and we can calibrate every time we measure, ideally. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to be using a beaker and this fancy magnetic stirrer, which is not needed, but my wife gave it to me and I like it, so I'm going to be using it. Uh, I'm going to be using a 250 milliliter beaker but you can use something bigger or smaller depending on how much buffer you want to prepare. This is going to be pretty uh, hassle-free, so you're gonna see that this preparation is gonna be pretty, pretty easy. So we're gonna start by adding some distilled water or demineralized water. You can use RO water for this. So I'm going to be doing around 150 milliliters. Should be fine. Now, I am going to start stirring it. First thing I'm going to add is going to be the, you can add whichever you want first, but if for a pH 4 buffer, they're around the same amount, but for a pH, um, for a pH 7 buffer, you want to add the potassium citrate first because you're gonna need very little of the citric acid. So I'm gonna add the citric acid first. How much to add will depend on how strong you want the buffer to be. For calibration, we don't need a very precise strength, which is why I'm, you, you see that I'm sort of winging it, because we just need the buffer to be strong enough. When we're weighing it and preparing it without a pH meter, we need to be very precise because our pH target depends entirely of us weighing things precisely. 
But right now, we only need the strength to be enough for the buffer to hold when we are measuring pH and not to deviate when we're calibrating. So we're just going to use, uh, just like, yay amount, like half a spoonful of the citric acid. Uh, and we're just gonna keep stirring this. First time I ever used this magnetic stir, hopefully it doesn't explode. So we added it and it's already dissolved. Now, what we are going to do now is that we're going to add the preservative because we want to add everything uh, that we want to be in the solution before we actually adjust the pH. So I'm going to add just like a teaspoon of the benzoate because it's not super soluble. If you add too much and it doesn't dissolve, you can filter it later. It's no big deal. It's going to be hard to dissolve because in, its, in acid pH, it's under its protonated form, which has a lower solubility. It will be all benzoic acid, which is not very soluble. But as we add base, it will dissolve, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm screwed. <laughs> okay, so now, what we are going to do now is that we're going to measure the pH of this solution. And we are going to add this And we are going to add the potassium citrate, which is this, until we reach the pH of 4. So I am going to put this pH meter here under stirring so that you guys can see what it is. So in this case, it's 2.3, the pH. So we need to bring it all the way up to 4. So what I'm going to do is that with the steering on, although you can just steer, you don't have a fancy magnetic steer, you can just steer with a spoon between the readings. I am going to be adding, so let's add some potassium citrate and see where this takes the reading. Okay, now you saw it was around 315. Before fully adjusting to four, I also almost forgot, we also need to add the coloring. So I'm going to adjust a drop. This coloring is pretty strong, so just a little bit gives you enough. So don't go crazy on the coloring, okay? Otherwise it will be black. <laughs> so we see that it's around 3, 310, 314. So now I'm going to add a little bit more of the potassium citrate. Okay, so we see it's around 3.5. So we need to still add a little bit more. pH will move progressively slower as we approach 4. So pH, since citric acid has a buffer between, a, I mean, from, from very low pH to, seven, to all close to 7 or a little bit higher than 7, you can create buffers in that entire region. And a pH moves quite slowly with addition of conjugate base, which is potassium citrate. So it will get it will it will not be as fast and so it will be slow to get there okay now i'm going to add a little bit more so it's at 370 now so i'm going to add a little bit more It's important to wait till all the citrate dissolves before you add more. You don't want to go over four, over your target, in this case four. So it's at 382. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. Three eighty-eight. Three ninety-two. Three 
green 86. So when you approach, uh, when you're approaching four, you'll notice that if the reading, the instability in the reading due to the movement will become greater. So it's important to stop when you're close to, to your target and just let the pH uh, meter rest in the undisturbed solution so that you can get a stable reading, so that you can get the smiley face thingy on the pH meter. And um, now we are going to add a little bit more because we are at 396 and we want to get to 4. So I'm going to restart the steering, just add a tiny amount I'm going to steer it for some time so that it fully dissolves. Now I'm going to turn it off and put my pH meter there. Yeah, so we're at, we, are, we are at 397 now, so I'm going to repeat the process. Restart the steering. Add a little bit of the potassium citrate. Let it steer for a bit. Whoa. Okay. Let it steer for a bit. And put the meter back in. Steer the meter in there a little bit. Set it there. Four. And the pH is four. Oh. 399. Well, good enough. <laughs> 399. So we could try to get it to four. Yeah, let's try and get it to perfect. Because that's who we are. Let's get this to perfection. So I'm going to start it again and just add the tiniest, tiniest switch so that we can get that little bit to four. So give it some seconds to fully dissolve. Now I'm going to steer this a little bit and just let the meter rest there. Okay, so we need a little bit more, a little bit more base. Just a tiny amount. Don't go overboard when you are this close because then you will overshoot. If you overshoot, no stress, you can just add citric acid to bring it back down. You will only make a stronger buffer. So if you overshoot by a little bit or by a lot, doesn't matter, you can just go and add the, the acid or the base depending on the way you overshoot it. Okay, so. Hope it's fully mixed. As you can see, it requires, since we're getting to us, we are in a strong buffering region, it requires a lot of these to, to increase the pH. So these last like few points are going to take a significant amount of time. Final smidge. Okay, so as you can see, we got the buffer to four exactly. You don't need to get it to four exactly. You can get it to like 399 or 401, 402. But the important thing is that you are really, really close so that when you calibrate, the error is minimal because errors in your calibrated solutions will, of course, expand onto your measurements. The good thing about this method is that after you finish preparing your, your solution and adjusting the pH, you are pretty much done. You can uh, verify that the solution remains the same, so you can leave the pH meter there for a while to verify that it's not drifting, but you have a strong buffer solution, which is much stronger than the CO2 in the atmosphere, so it will tend not to drift. It was very easy to prepare. We didn't even need a scale. It has the coloring and it has the preservative, because contrary to when we did it by weight, since this is not analytically calculated, but it is actually being done experimentally, we can add these things that affect the pH a little bit, and we can compensate by adding buff, uh, by adding base or acid accordingly. And there you have it. 
Don't drink it, although it wouldn't be toxic. It's just a citric acid buffer, so it's fine. And this is food coloring, and this is used as a preservative in a lot of food. Don't drink it either way, but there you have it. You have now prepared a buffer experimentally. As you can see, all the sodium benzoate even eventually dissolved uh, as we increase the pH. This is now a buffer that we can use for calibration, and it was pretty easy to repair. Don't give more of your money to those uh, large evil buffer corporations. <laughs> just kidding, you can get some just to calibrate to do this, but then after that, you can prepare a lot of buffer. You can prepare a gallon of buffer so that you can calibrate as often as possible. This will ensure that your readings stay spot on through your entire hydroponic experience. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the preparation of this buffer. Please remember to like and subscribe. Like, there's, there's only like uh, less than 500 subscribers, so please. I know there's more of you out there. I see how many view the videos. A select minority. And <laughs> please, we just opened up our Instagram. So also please visit our Instagram. We left the link on the, in the video description. And I also left links to buy all this stuff from Amazon if you wish to get it so that you can make this preparation yourselves. Not the exact same stuff because I'm not in the US right now, so I buy these locally, but I left you equivalents in the US in case you are buying them from the US or Canada. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video and bye-bye.